Good luck. Yeah, lately I've been more watching videos and trying to make my way through reading a book than anything else. Um, so, uh, we did find, subsequent to our most recent game, um, that should we end up playing bishop exchange? In these positions, it's okay to put the bishop back here on 3-3. Three, three. Um, so, I forget whether that's strictly a static rook or a swinging rook thing, but at least it's food for thought that the bishop on 3-3 three, three here is actually quite good. Um, So, I guess also worthy of note is that, like, I'm just on the boundary of uh, Wondon, recently having achieved it in last week's teaching ladder. It would not surprise me if I unachieved it and reachieved it, and, like, we end up going above and below and above and below Wondon. So, um, that all said, it makes more sense for me to participate in tourney to master than tourney to showdown if i'm basically already at showdown um i think i have some grasp of the fundamentals of the game it's just the rest of it that needs a bit of work um hmm. these always confuse me so he's played this really low castle um, it's left him wide open on this side of the board, actually. Um. I have to decide, well, this makes no target for my silver. So I have to decide what I'm going to do about him advancing his silver and trying to hit my bishop's head. My bishop's just going to move away. Um. Yeah, this is interesting. Well, I choose to believe that this side of the board can take care of itself. Now, if this silver climbs too far up, my bishop can always retreat to 1-5 here. Uh, and threaten some nonsense. And that's no longer available. Um, uh, oh, interesting. We'll play this to defend against poss possible bishop exchange ideas. Um, so in the event that bishops happen to get exchanged somehow, I am somewhat insulated against that. Um, against a rook trying to break in on the second file. We're going to open this line for the rook. My move order is probably quite suspect. Oh, also, I just realized, um, I, well, this should be fine. Usually I adjust the game volume from in-game, so usually I go here before the match, and that way um, I know that we're getting the best quality of uh, the piece sounds. So... Yeah, even here, I think I'm fine. Yeah, 
If I push this... No, I have not completed half Mino yet. But if I push the pawn in front of my bishop, this stuff can get pretty crazy. Um, yeah, then my bishop doesn't have very many places to go. I should have done that a long time ago. Basically, in this opening, I'm always profoundly concerned that he's going to break through on um, the second file. And uh, in practice, every time I look at this, that never happens. Um, like, every time I show this game, uh, a game where an opponent plays a static rook, and it looks like they're breaking through, there always ends up being one more resource that I miss. There's always just one more thing to keep this rook at bay. Hello. So currently I'm considering if I push my center pawn, this makes room for the bishop, also makes room for my rook to go behind his silver and threaten to promote. Because that seems to be the right thing to do here. Um, obviously he's intending a pawn drop here. And then he's intending to push this, but... I think this is all okay. We're going to find out in a second. Just maybe I've fallen into some stupid opening thing that I should know about by now. But as long as I'm trying to uh, keep my pieces active and trying to take things, um, I should have some success because, like, this point, right, that's not defended by the bishop, that's only defended by the king, and it's actually quite difficult to defend unless he builds Yagra, which he's not done. Um, this is probably going to be a target for attack later. So the fact that he somehow he might manage to promote his silver and promote his gold and all that might not even matter if I can just win the king, which seems to be nailed in by this coffin here. Um... If I retreat, and then they move their pawn in front of the bishop. Maybe that's okay. Probably it's not okay. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. We'll find out. So I could always bring this silver up to fight if I need to. My opponent seems to have brought the fight to me. Um, although he has not put the rook on the third file just yet. Right, so... I'll try to make the best of this odd situation. I do have a pawn in hand. I am threatening to move my bishop to this diagonal as soon as his silver moves somewhere that it can no longer block on 4-6. 
I am threatening that if he does pawn takes, I could do rook takes, followed by rook takes the pawn in front of the king, and then drop back and then over and start taking this. But he's going to start slowly building up a castle. Uh, the only confusing thing here is that um, like if he builds a castle in front of the bishop, then he'll need to find a way to get the bishop active. So... I'm not sure where his bishop's going to go right now. And it's not in my interest to do pawn takes pawn because silver takes... Um, and I don't have a good way to evict the silver. And it's threatening to block on 4-6. So right now I'm trying to limit his attack to just this one silver. Um... I don't want to help him activate his other silver. On the other hand, I have committed a lot of pieces to defending this left side of the board, so maybe that's not so bright on my part. I'm guessing he's looking for a way to sacrifice something so he can promote his rook. Yeah. Well, I can't just let that... Pro well, can I? If I just ignore that for now, then his uh, pawn takes, silver takes, and then bishop takes lance. That doesn't look so bright. But... Um, yeah, now let's stick to the plan. This was the plan. Still is the plan. And if silver takes, then I move my bishop here, and I get to promote. And as pieces exchange, um, we'll figure out what his castle really is. Do I have my badge on this stream? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. Set that up. I have this badge in the lower right corner that shows, like, here's my playing style, here's my current rank, etc. Just for confused viewers. Um, okay, so he's threatening to pawn drop in front of my silver. And I would rather have an entire piece than a pawn. But also, my bishop is misplaced. Let's take care of that first. If I move my bishop, he promotes the pawn. Silver takes, silver takes, gold takes. Oh, I'm threatening the rook. Let's not ignore that. Let's not take that too lightly. Yes, yeah, so this was the plan. Let's stick to the plan. It looks like a good plan still. And so once he does something about this, then we put the pawn here, and the silver either takes it or moves away, and stuff gets complicated accordingly. Um, again, it's not in my interest to take this pawn, because helping the, the silver climb out of the castle just helps his position. Right now, this is kind of trapping his king in. And this is in the way of the gold, which would like to occupy the same square. I'm 
actually, depending where the rook moves, like if it goes to defend the lance, I could pawn drop right here and then threaten to promote my pawn and win the rook for a pawn. That might not be bad. Oh, but if I pawn drop here, he pawn drops on 2-8. Uh, and suddenly I don't get very far. Hmm. Hmm. This is a question of if he uh, defends the lance, do I defend against this silver that keeps encroaching? Like he's threatening to put a pawn here and then take my lance and so forth. Do I stop all that? Um, well, I can't really stop him from winning my lance. So, yeah, maybe I just pawn drop here instead, then take the, or actually here, and then promote, and the rook moves up, and then we could choose if we take the knight or the lance. Um, or if we put another pawn here and keep trying to chase the rook. After we put a pawn here, promoted it, and the rook runs here, we put another pawn there. Rook swings over. Well, none of them bishop takes. Um, hmm. And then knight takes bishop. So we've lost some moves in trying to pursue material. That's not great. Uh, oh, none of that matters. Still of interest is pawn drop. Well, pawn drop is countering that anyway. So if I drop here and a silver retreats, well, that's not happening, but that's wishful thinking. If I drop the pawn here and the silver promotes, silver takes, pawn takes, gold takes, bishop. No, wait. Pawn, silver, knight, pawn. Yeah, this is not great. Um. So I'm not winning material that way. Uh, bishop takes, pawn promotes, pawn drop. How many does he have protecting this if I take? Yeah, I'm still losing in general. So if I take the lance, I lose the general for it. Um, if I do anything, he's promoting this pawn. I guess that ship has sailed. Since defense is no longer possible, yeah, let's just do the obvious thing. So I keep mentioning how this pawn here would be a very nice target. Um, now the problem is he can already start to move his silver this way to defend it. So I'm thinking now about pawn takes, and if the silver goes this way, then pawn drop or dropping something over here. It's going to take some time for him to defend this point, but I only have one attacker, so it's not really... I don't know. There's got to be some way to attack this. I don't have a knight in hand. I'm threatening to get a knight. A knight drop here, followed by knight takes pawn. Could be interesting. Also, if he does some sort of promotion here, pawn drop, um, restricts his rook. And even if he takes it with the knight, 
Um, I'm trying to read this out. No, I don't win material there. Well, it's complicated. If I let the bishop promote, I have a lance drop back here, then the bishop takes on this pawn, and I'm, my rook is threatened, but then I do lance takes knight, and I'm threatening their rook. Um, hmm. The easiest way to threaten the rook is just bishop takes knight. But then the rook becomes active in the middle of the board and very difficult to restrict. Knight takes, silver takes, pawn drop. Um, I'm not sure what they do. Knight takes, and I take their silver, and that's a free general. Free, he says, for the cost of a knight. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I have to start this way. The knight is worth about three pawns. Generals are worth much more. And now, if he takes with the silver, I can block the rook. And they could take two generals, and I get a rook and a knight. This is one way this could continue. Um, I've already gotten the lance. I guess my point is, like, lots of stuff gets exchanged here. And I've built a castle, and I'm not entirely confident in my opponent's castle. I'm more confident in my own. In fact, yeah, I could pawn drop knight takes, and I could drop my lance on 5-5, five five, supporting whatever attack I've already got going, but it's not much. And pawn takes pawn kind of ruins that, so maybe not. Um... One thing I didn't read was another pawn drop on the knight's head. Although I guess my knight just goes kamikaze toward this 5-7 point. Um, yeah, so this is the move I expected. I don't know if they expected this pawn drop or not. I assume they did. We've both been trying to read this, and it's just not that easy. So at this point, I think they could either spend a turn to save their rook, or they exchange the rook for two generals and the ability to promote this bishop. Actually, do they get two generals out of this? Let's say silver takes gold, rook takes. Um, They have a gold they can draw. Oh, okay, this is possible too. Um... I get a silver out of this if I take the rook. Okay, this is confusing. So there's several ways to play this. If I take the rook right now, I get a rook. Which is actually kind of nice. Um, 
if I take this silver takes silver, um, then if bishop takes, then I take the rook and I win more material. If silver takes silver, rook takes, gold takes, bishop takes, and it, I'm doing even better, I think. So I think this is even better than exchanging my horse for the rook. Well, at least if I'm counting points. Um, if I'm just trying to get a stable position, which is probably what I should be trying to do instead of exchanging everything, um, then this is probably not the right idea. But these two generals were so ineffective back there. Yeah, so... We have now got ourselves a rook, which is a nice piece to have. Um, let's try to make some room for my rook to do something. I want to keep aiming toward the king, is what I've been told. Um, how do I do that here? Well, we've got lots of pawns. Pawns should be our uh, attacker of choice. so tempting to just like try want to put a lance here and then if uh, they exchange then uh, get my rook in the center of the board um, but better is if I just uh, use all my pieces to attack toward their castle right now um, Not sure where my lance ideally fits here. Yeah, I think we're just going to keep hitting the castle from this direction. This was the idea I had in mind when I placed the pawn, but I just hesitated a bit because other options are possible here. Uh, the minute I put my rook down, they're going to start putting pawns in the way of my rook. Or use a pawn to support the gold, or something like that. Um, okay. Um, they have some threat of horse takes uh, gold. Now, if I move my rook away... They're just going to block my rook. I need to keep chasing the king. This is a very unfortunate timing where I've trapped my horse in the corner. But 
I don't expect this to remain this way for very long here. Um, of some concern is pawn drop on 5-9 up here. Uh, makes it, solidifies the castle a little bit. I just really didn't see what else to try here. I want to use all my pieces to attack. I want this knight and some ability to hit the back rank. I'm just not sure where I should be striking. All right, did not think that would happen. That's just a free piece, I think. It's unfortunate. I have a pawn on the fifth pile. I'd like to put one butts to support my gold right now. Um, but I should just focus on attacking unless they make some concrete threat. I could put a lance behind the gold. That might not be bad. So in case like they do some sort of rook drop on this back rank, I can stop the rook. Well, then they pawn drop on my gold's head. Yeah, that could hurt still. Yeah, so this is still a painful move for me to deal with. Um, a bishop on this diagonal would cover a lot of things. On the other hand, it really doesn't look like they're attacking. Um... Hmm. Well, I could play a defensive move that also attacks in its own way, but mm, it loses material. I need every piece I have to in my attack. Um, yeah, let's just get this over with. So what I'm envisioning is gold takes gold, check, followed by a bishop drop here. This only works if I manage to survive against their current attack, but I think survival's possible. We'll find out momentarily. Oh, I should have... I had time to read this out. I've not been looking closely at the clock. Um... Yeah, that was poor time management on my part. I think I more or less have to take this gold and then just deal with whatever happens next, although it looks pretty good. Allowing their rook to defend their king would be a mistake. Or almost certainly would be a mistake. Not for certain, but very likely would be a mistake. So we're going to find some way to attack the rook and defend against stuff. I'm convinced he has to do king takes gold because that's the only piece I have right next to his king. Um, and I'm not sure where my bishop goes to continue such that I can continue attacking, but like here, hitting the rook. Oh. Yeah, that doesn't work. 
I'm very convinced that I have this at this point. Like, gold drop right here is mate, no? Um, I'd be astounded if this did not checkmate. Looking at alternatives. Well, I have to play the move, but how do we follow? Well, it's not checkmate, it's brinkmate. It's I have all my generals next to your king sort of situation. That's not the same thing as checkmate, but might as well be. Um, so I just have to be a little bit cautious of am I myself mated at this point. Um, that's the only difference between checkmate and brinkmate. Um, is that if, I'm, if I have a brinkmate, that means they have one move to get out of whatever I'm attacking. Um, yeah, this must win. It hits the rook, it hits the square where they're vulnerable. Um, so yeah, they could retreat and promote the rook, and this contradicts everything I just said about I can't let that happen. And, like, yeah, I just let that happen. Um, that's not good. To put it mildly, that is not good. I was so excited about, like, saving my king from, like, a silver drop and wherever the rook might drop and a knight drop and all this. Okay, that's just a free piece. Um, there's no way that I made it here. The way to try to resist there, I think, was rook drop, or moving the rook to 3-8. So they say if you have four attackers, the attack never runs out. If you have zero attackers, if you sacrifice your final remaining attacker, Chances are not so good. It'll take some time for you to build up an attack at that point. So he needs to... Since I'm threatening... Well, I want to say I'm threatening to take the gold and then drop both golds with mate. Oh. Right. I, I don't have a bishop to drop with the mate threat anymore, do I? Well spotted. I forgot about that. Um, all right. Hmm. Again, he could use a piece. He could either move his rook or drop a rook on the second rank to protect his king. Um, yeah, my whole basis that my attack was winning was that I had a bishop in hand that I could deal with this, and I don't have the bishop in hand anymore. Um, that's optimistic. Dude, you have a rook in hand. Why aren't you using it? I could take the pawn and then drop a silver here and 
Well, there's not much to follow. Um... Okay, we're going to use my bishop and the, the gold that I just obtained. Oh, I've got two bishops to attack with. I should use this one too. Just have to get the pieces onto the correct squares, which might not be so easy. Actually, moving this bishop away makes my king safer than keeping it here. Because rook takes bishops always a threat. Yeah, that's bizarre. Um, no, like, there's no way. This is mate in three. And uh, gold five five is mate next. All right, good game. Yeah, this Supernova is full of some very exciting games. Um, so, um, yeah, I think both of us were optimistic in our attacks. And it just happens that my attack works somewhat better than theirs does here. Um, I know they've been playing quite a few Supernova games. The one, that's the one thing I observed in the tournament prior to this. I was going to reduce the board size and see if they wanted to chat, but um, apparently they're on to their next game. Uh, they'll study this later. Yeah, it was an exciting game. Um, the parts I'm concerned where I might have made mistakes are the opening, the middle game, and the end game. But other than that, it was really exciting. I mean, I think it, uh, there are a lot of positive things I did this game, but because this was such a sharp game, I'm going to be very critical of my play. Yeah, yeah, we found some ideas here. Like, I think we've got a grasp of the fundamentals of Shogi at this point. Um, So much so that we could get into this tussle and try to work it out. Um. Yeah, in the months past, I don't think I would have gotten this position. Um, I probably would have done Pawn Takes Pawn much earlier. And whether that's good or bad, like, to me, I thought it was bad because then the silver climbs up to 4-6, and then either I can never take the lance or my horse is trapped. Um, so, yeah, I'm still not sure about the way this played out. This is confusing. Um, yeah, in retrospect, kind of like this. Um, although, I'm not sure what happens. Like, maybe they do take here or something. Well, if they take here, my rook takes. Never mind. So maybe they do take... I guess they have to take the bishop. And then this is actually quite nice. Um, so we still got some ways to go. I did spend some time looking at this, and I don't know why I rejected it. I got so obsessed about trying to count material the same way we do in chess, and really it's the quality of what's left behind. In this case, I don't get their bishop. Their castle is still intact, and they they can start attacking already. Like, they, well, this doesn't help because now my silver moves out of the way, but um, I can't pawn drop here in front of the rook because I've not clumsily done pawn takes pawn just yet. Give it time. 
But yeah, I think this position could have been pleasant. Instead, we got the chaos that happened in the game, which is pretty weird. Uh... Okay, yeah. I did not expect my rook to stay fixed in that position. Um, so the reason I picked this square is because I attacked the knight. And then if I have a knight in hand, I'm sure my attack succeeds at that point. So, like, this is risky since I'm blocking my horse. It severely reduces the value of the horse. Um, so here I'm basically asking my opponent... Um, let me do a combination right now. I'm ready to sacrifice this. Um, and they responded by just taking my rook here. And just ignoring what I was doing. Um, which I don't... Yeah, I think maybe you're right. I should have picked some other square. I don't really need the knight, I guess. I don't know. Probably 1-8 is better. Oh, okay, so we have some indication that some other positions, maybe we should just let the rook go and take in these generals, even though we don't have a bishop in hand. I was concerned the king might run up, and my king might get overwhelmed from behind. Uh, that's hard. But Schwartz is, I believe, on the site uh, Fordon. So, um, I should certainly... Um, uh, try to learn from what he's trying to show, show me here. Yeah, so this looks menacing. Definitely looks menacing, but um, I know there are a lot of people, or there's at least one spectator on the site. But yeah, my concern was with this um, suddenly it becomes difficult to continue attacking. At this point, I need to really... I keep saying this, and I keep going back and spending time coding instead of studying, but if I study more Sume, I'll know how to help break this sort of thing down. Um, but yeah, certainly I have a nice attack here. I don't need a knight to make it any nicer. Yeah, the end actually confused me. Um, here, just go for material. Yeah, that's what I ended up doing, and here even, um, moving the bishop improves my king's safety, although uh, if I had the extra gold and I'm activating this bishop, that'd be nice too. There, are, I suspect much of what I did toward the end was inaccurate, and like most of the time he had either a rook move here or a rook drop there that severely slows my attack. Um, because I had not led, uh, uh, led my attack from the head of the castle, suddenly all my generals are just hanging out on the first rank. Um, so I was not so happy with my attack. Uh, I heard two clicks, so which means somebody commented. Move 56, uh, Santa's winning. Let's see, so, um, yeah, so we're asking here, after silver takes, do we have gold drop here? I was deeply concerned, because uh, to me this looked pretty awful for me. Oh, uh-oh. That inverts the move order. I was looking at the other move order, where it looked like I might have some chance. Here, this looks painful. Um, yeah, this looks very painful. Maybe I can survive it, 
but um, I don't know. This is a strange place to drop the lance, but if I put anything else here, I'm screwed. So, Or rather, if I put my bishop here, he just exchanges and promotes it. If I put my gold here, I'm giving up my best defensive piece um, for something that could use to strongly attack me. Um, but I'm not so sure this is winning, but it looks nice for Senta. Because their king can run, and mine can't. Yeah. Uh, well spotted. So, yeah, probably uh, Santa is better. We think we see something here? Got my curiosity, but I'm not sure. Oh! Okay. Yeah, my attack just falls apart. Although I do get a knight. There's the knight that I wanted all along. Finally get it. But, um, at what price? Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll leave this to the engines to figure it out. But, yeah, I think that Santa stands better there. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at some of the other things. So, like here, I spent time promoting my pawn. I wonder, like, there's so many other things I could have done here. It's like, there's this idea, there's this idea, maybe there's this, I don't know. And instead, I took here. Maybe it's all for the best. Yeah, that we'll leave that particular thing to the engines, because it's complicated. There must have been some way I could accelerate my attack further than I already did. But uh, I just don't see it. Yeah, maybe this was the right move. We have a comment. Let's see what the comment is. We have another comment. Alright, yeah, they're thanking us for the game. So, yeah, I think... This is complicated. Ooh, Pawn Hub's got a good suggestion. Oh! <laughs> well, that combines everything I've been looking at, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, yes, they can interpose, but... Uh, yeah, then we just win the horse. That's why I'm so confused. Okay, yeah. I was considering, like, rook drop on all these squares, and I missed this one. I was also considering, like, sacrificing the rook here, and or considering uh, trading the horses. No, this just clearly wins on the spot. Because if he spends time to save the horse, this castle is no more. Um, yeah, that is nice. Alright, so... Yeah, that is very nice. Well spotted by Pawn Hub. Um, let's see, from the opening, or do I have other things to comment on? I don't know. This whole thing was confusing. Um, so this might have been a wasted move. I could consider bringing this forward, but I want my rook to be active. I don't know. I uh, should do this. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll need to have more games to get some sense of what's practical and what isn't. Um, yeah, so let's say I do this. Oh, okay, sorry. If I move this here, he just pushes. Yeah, that's not so bright. Um, never mind. Um, hmm.
Can you spot something faster after the gold drop in the final position? So, here. Um, I mean, so we have this. This is just mate. But you're asking, is there something faster than that? Or you're asking in some other move number, perhaps. Um, I mean, also, like, there's this. That works, too. The first gold drop. All right. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Not exactly sure where. This one? This is on move 57. Yeah, I mean, this is a position that had me confused. Um, so I did consider Rook Takes Knight trying to get both my Rook and Horse active. I did consider Rook Takes Gold and had no idea what was going on. Um... There's a number of bishop drops I can use to hit the rook and attack stuff. Hmm. Since he doesn't have a mate threat. Oh, gold 7-9. Alright. Yeah. So. Here. Oh, wait. Did I hallucinate something during the game, perhaps? Um, so if I'm not mated, um, maybe this is interesting. Well, no, I don't know. This is probably not the right way. Um, yeah, it seems a bit passive. So, like, during the game I was looking at this, but um, even after here, like, I wasn't so... Well, okay. Hang on. So yeah, maybe there's something to this. Maybe that is it. I was just so concerned that um, somehow I get mated first. If, especially if I give away the only pieces I can use to defend on the first rank. Um, but yeah, there's, these generals just run amok, and it's kind of hard for the opponent to get generals near their own king. Um, I did consider gold takes knight, but that doesn't seem to do anything. It does vacate that 8-9 uh, square, so I could put another gold on 7-9 and do something, but, um... Or I could put the bishop on 7-9, or, you know, like... I don't know. Thirty-four rook 2 6 I guess we'll take a look at that. Yeah, so I'm trying to first answer this question. Like, surely there's a way here. I mean, if nothing else, the bishop drop right here points toward the king, and then I just have one more piece ready to trap the king there. But, um... All right, you drop another gold on 7-8. Yeah. 
and take, oh, take this goal. Okay. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Usually when I take something, I'm giving away a piece, but in this position, I'm not giving away a piece. Um, so yeah, this definitely forces the opponent to defend. Yeah, this is faster. Since this is a mate threat, they have to respond to it. And they don't have a mate threat of their own here. Let me just verify that they don't have a mate threat, because this is scaring me the entire game. Uh, or rather, the entire end game. Like, I was concerned. Um, no, this doesn't. That does mate me. So I can't do that. So I have to go here. But then this does not mate anymore. Yeah. So here I have survived. Well, at least if they don't use this rook, I've survived. But I don't see this rook helping out. Yeah. Simple once you see it, you know, you pick the right square, because that's kind of important here. But yeah, in this case, there's not a whole lot of lines to look at. There's just this one and that one. And you just have to look at uh, the correct one first, or look at both of them. So yeah, I survive against a silver. Um, if this were a bishop, uh, then like they'd have a rook drop and I don't know what else, but um, yeah. In fact, I just got, uh, just purchased uh, Katagami's book about which pieces do you need to checkmate. I really should read that. Um, yeah, let's now take a look at the 34 uh, rook g6 idea. So you're 17. I don't have a way to skip like 10 moves at a time. That'd be kind of nice. Um, okay, but move 34. Rook to six. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah, you're right. Their attack is very strong here. They manage to uh, promote the bishop. They promote the pawns. And I manage to win a lance. And that's it. Okay. That is a good point. So, yeah, that's kind of like after this game, I'd said, yeah, this was an exciting game, but um, I had the sense that I was missing something. It, now I think I understand why I was so confused. <laughs> yeah, and like a lot of my games, I guess of many games by amateur players, um, do go in a similar fashion where... Uh, at some point, one player misses something, and the other takes advantage. Um, okay, yeah, it's worth having at least two candidate moves. I've certainly seen in chess, some people will just fixate, well, even in Shogi, I've seen some streamers look at one move. That's the only thing they can look at, and then comes time to make a decision and they make a decision based on the only move they've looked at. Um, so that's... you need to consider multiple candidate moves. Um, yeah, and I think in general I'm doing okay at that. 
in cases where I am only looking at one candidate move, I'm trying to decide, is this good enough? And it's better if you can actually read out multiple variations to see like what the options are. So because this completely wins for Senta, and it does, like, yeah, all their pieces are promoting, my entire left side of the board has collapsed. That means I need to back up, and either, like, my idea of pushing the center pawn is just what dooms me there, or, um, or there's some other justification why this is okay. Um, wait, how did we get here? So I push this. I can just do this here. Um, maybe it's maybe I can't do that. Okay, what else? How do we like survive this then? Yeah, thank you. So one thing is that the, even if I end up losing all that material, it's still okay as long as I haven't let the bishop promote. And if this bishop's still part of the castle, there's still something to attack. So that's fine. Um, I guess based on how quickly the silver is advancing, this might be a, a reasonable timing to drop the bishop back here or there. Um, mm, doesn't make any difference in terms of blocking this rook from advancing. Yeah, I'm just too slow to deal with this threat. Um, so someday I'll find an opponent who exploits this, and we'll have to look deeper at it, but we should probably look closer at it now. <sighs> yeah, I mean, this is just really common. I should have a response to that, even when they don't, like, make some obvious target for me to strike. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, glad to share. Glad to have so many opinions. Um, and thanks for your help with the analysis here.